Hi, I'm Michael Sherman. I'm the Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer for BT Group. And I'm also the, a new non-executive director for Ocado and a part of the nomination committee. By background, I am an engineer by trade and programmer. So I started my career actually writing software uh, and started a software company. Uh, but lately, I consider myself a, a strategist and I lead strategy and transformation for BT. So what brings me to Ocado Group? I, um, you know, quite honestly, I was looking for a very important UK-based business that matched with some of my fundamental interests. So I wanted to get involved in a company that had technology, had an important mission uh, um, for the UK, but also uh, had the opportunity to be a global brand um, and global strength. And so Okada has just ma matched all of the things that I, I excited me. So what do I bring to Okada Group? Uh, I think a few things. One is, you know, I, I consider myself a pretty good strategist, um, so I'm really excited to be able to work with some of the strategy leaders here at Ocado and just thinking about what's going to change in the world over the next decade and how can Scott, uh, Ocado ensure that it can compete well. And then I'm also a digital technologist, like I mentioned, and so I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to claim to be the expert programmer, but I do um, keep my uh, keep an eye on the trends that are happening in the industry, and I think I'll bring some insightful uh, and thoughtful. Um, ideas around technology. I've always been passionate about um, diversity and this has been something I just invest a lot of time in because I, I think that so many people get underestimated for their capabilities um, based on visual cues or background cues that people put beliefs on them. My biggest sponsors throughout my career were, were not other black executives um, because there weren't a whole lot of other black executives. It was actually usually white men, uh, straight white men, who leaned in to help me at stages on things that I didn't know, things that I couldn't do, but saw talent. And I recognized that they invested in me. Now, on the counter side of that is, I was pretty comfortable to them. I, I went to you know, a top school, went to Duke University. I fit into a lot of, I played golf, I fit into the, the, the kind of culture of the executives. So they were very comfortable you know, engaging with me. And then as I got more personal relationships with some of these mentors, I learned that what they wanted at the time was, you know, it was fine that I was black, but as long as the rest of my life matched their lives, it was comfortable for them. So that's not really inclusion. Uh, it's hard to extrapolate across all com uh, companies what uh, diverse in inclusion and diversity looks like across the UK. But my general take is it's uh, relative to the discussions happening in the United States is it's maybe five to ten years behind. Um, and um, a lot of that is, you know, there, there is this kind of culture on, and it's coming down, but of, there's certain things you just don't talk about in the office. And so, you know, this, we don't want to, we don't want to feel uncomfortable, so we don't engage in those uncomfortable discussions. I think we're getting there in the UK, which is good, but uh, um, hopefully uh, with the momentum around some of the efforts on DNI right now, we don't lose that momentum and go backwards, because I, I really think the UK is on the precipice of doing some really great things to ensure that boards, uh, executives, and the employee base uh, match the population at large.